H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Okay, so how we're going to do this? Uh, the database testing stuff, like basically, we're going to do this. First, let's try to understand some of these concepts, like how we can do this uh, database testing. Here, first we need to create. Basically, there are a couple of things. In order to create any automation script, basically you need to create first a connection string, which is a, a DSM. So, what this connection string mainly contains is the ODBC, the drivers, and the database details. Okay, this connection string, DSN is a data source name, data source name, and it all depends on which database you are trying to connect, ODBC is a open database connectivity. And then how are you going to define this uh, ODBC driver C so it's a, like it's an interface or we can also say like the APIs application programming interface. It's a interface that uh, connects in order to talk to the database, right, you need to have the appropriate uh, ODBC drivers to the database. You know, like uh, the bottom line is say, uh, you want to you want to connect a printer to your system, right? Then, see, once you connect the printer, then you also install the drivers, right? Basically, what those drivers are useful. Like see, the moment you plug in your computer and to the printer, you cannot print it. So, so you need to install this soft, the printer software, which are the ODBC drivers. Uh, sorry, which are the device drivers. Then only you should be able to print it. That basically, those drivers are establish a connection between your computer and the printer. Similarly here, like you have the ODBC drivers that establish a connection to the database. Again, depends on the database, what you're trying to connect, you will get different ODBC drivers. So how I know what drivers uh, I'm going to connect? So basically all those drivers get installed with your operating system. So if you go to this uh, control panel, See this control panel, and then if you go to this administrative tools, then there is a data sources, ODBC section. So if you select this one, then here, so if you add, then it's going to show you all the list of ODBC drivers. See, just you click on this add, it's going to show you the list of ODBC drivers. Suppose if you're making a connection to the Oracle database, then you have to select this one, Microsoft ODBC for Oracle database. 
if you are connecting to the SQL Server database, you're going to select this SQL Server ODBC driver. So it depends on which database you are trying to connect, you are going to select the appropriate ODBC driver from this list. Okay? Either it's a SQL, <coughs> it's, it's a SQL Server or Microsoft ODBC for Oracle. So you have this list of ODBC drivers. So, once you establish a connection to the ODBC drivers, right? Then you should be able to um, make a make a connection to the database. So the first part is you need to select the ODBC drivers, and then you're going to provide the database details. So what we're trying to do is like this is the application where we can access this application database. Um, let me show you. See, all this uh, sample application that comes with uh, this GFT. See, here like you'll find this flight, the GUI. And this is the GUI part. And this application use a database that also installed on your system, the database that this application use. So this is the this where the location of the database, what this application uses. Okay, this the this is the front end. So for example, when I log in, right, and then so you're going to create an order, right? Say from say uh, Paris to uh, Portland. Right. And then you can select the date and find flights. Then you're going to select a particular flight from this list. Then you're going to enter some passenger name, right? Something. So I'm going to put um, something like say test DB as the passenger name. Okay. So I put this passenger name, some unique name, and then hit this order button. So now it says order 88 is completed. And where this information gets stored is backend in this database. If you look at say, I already connected to this database. Uh, I'm going to show you one more time how you can establish a connection, how you can control the database. Um, so here, like we're, we're talking about the ODBC drivers, right? So first you're going to create a DSN, data source name in order to connect to the database. See, this is the database. What are the information that you provided from this GUI? All this information gets stored into this database on the back end. So now you are making a connection to this database to see what data is stored. So what you're going to do is first you need to create a DSN for that. So how you create a DSN? So basically you're going to select say add and this particular application is using this is the s3 db file right which is a uh, a database so this one so there is a sql light that's a, this is the kind of the database this particular application is using SQ light. Best maybe sometimes like you don't see this ODBC driver. If you Google it like the ODBC driver for SQ light, then you should be able to install those drivers also from Google. So this is the SQ light uh, the database. And we are using this ODBC driver for SQ light. And say finish, then it's going to ask now like what is this database details. So you can give any name, something like say, say test DSN or something. Okay. And then, now you have to provide the, the path of this database. See here you have to provide the path like where this database is. Now you are providing the database details. And when I store 
S3DB. Okay. And then, now basically, in this case, you have to provide this client library also. Basically, once, in, once you get this uh, ODBC driver, right, you also get, like, wherever that ODBC driver is installed, like, see, this way, like, you're going to look at uh, this uh, client library. Because in order, in order to make a connection to this SQLite, you need this client library. This all comes with uh, that ODBC driver, okay? If you click on this uh, Browse for Bud button, so you see, see SQLite Studio, and then you will get those, the DLLs here. It's asking the client DLL, that is Qt5 code.dll. Then you're going to hit OK. So now, you see, it is uh, connected, right? Even you can also test it here, like whether it's, uh, see these are the details. Oh, I think I selected the wrong DLL here. So it says the connection is successful, right? Basically, you are going to click on this Add button and you are going to select from that list of the drivers, you are going to select the right ODBC driver. Like in this case, in this application is using SQLite database, right? This is the database. But if you, if in reality, like if, you, if your application is using say Oracle database, just click on this Add button and that time you're going to select the Microsoft ODBC for Oracle. Depends what database it's using, right? And then finish. Um, let's go, like, see here it's asking like something like the client components, those things installed. Anyway, like you can install those things. But depends on what ODBC driver you're selecting, right? Now it's asking, say for example, if, if you're trying to connect the SQL Server database. So now it's asking, hey, what is that, um, uh, the name? Like you can provide some, let's like say, test uh, DSN. Then here, like it's going to ask, like, uh, okay, you have to provide the server, which server you want to do this. From where you get these details is either from the developers or from the lead, right? So what is that server you're trying to connect? So sometimes it's going to show you the list of the servers here, or you can also enter the server name. Then that when just you, you should be able to create a connection, create a DSN data source to connect to the SQL server. Okay, depends on what what database that application uses. If you want to make a connection to the database, you can create a DSN like this, and then make a connection. So in our case, look, we created this ODB driver for SQLite, and then finish, then provide the database details. Okay. Um, so here you're going to provide all those details. What's the data source name? You can give any name for the data source name. And here you're going to provide the database details, the location and the file name, and the client library. So it's going to show you the client library once you install this SQL Lite Studio. And you should be able to select that client library from this list. This time. Okay, and then so you should create this DSN. You can also self-test here, whether it's say making a connection, so that it says connection is done successfully. So this is the first step. Just you create a DSN. This ODBC, okay, Mohit, this ODBC data source administrator is you can open from control panel. Like say if you open the control panel, so this way like you go to the control panel, 
from your startup menu then there is a administrative tools and then you see the ODBC data source section this is where it's going to show you those things okay so once you create this DSN then you are going to you can use this DSN okay so now so we created this DSN right now say for example like I'm going to it created this order 88 is completed right now I want to check whether this um, order is created successfully in the database so basically like uh, in UFT like you can create a just to look at the database right you can create this database checkpoint you can create this database checkpoint then you're going to say create query using Microsoft query right this is your select the first option and next so now it's going to show you the data source what you created see and you can select what are the data source like say we created test DSN right so you're going to select this data source and click OK now it's going to show you the tables from that database see now you want to look at which table you want to query right say I want to query the orders table so select this orders table and click on this greater than button see it's going to show you all the columns from the table see and click on next next and um, just you're going, if you select say view data and edit query so now it's going to show you all the data from that query see see basically like it says like order 88 is completed right see this is the order just uh, just now it's created see the order number is 88 and what are the customer name we provided right so test DB so that's a uh, passenger name and uh, the flight numbers is going to show you all the details how it's stored in the database this is like the manual step how you can do this stuff right first you create a DSN and then how you're going to create this query and then look at the data this clear now how you can do this uh, automation how we're going to develop a test script in order to do this thing so for that like you're going to create a test script I mean if you are are you using EFT 12 version such a or 11.5 yeah if you're using 11.5 basically what you have to do is uh, you can um, you can use I'm, I'm going to show you you need not install this SQLite basically for for 12.5 the application is using different database this UFT tool with 11.5 it's using access database so that's a pretty simple like um, see in order to do this access database uh, so even you don't worry about this uh, SQLite that connection part so basically like you can 
simply use this way. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to explain those things. So suppose uh, if you're using Learn Point Five, again if you go to this control panel, right? Administrative Tools and ODBC, because that application use Access Database Learn Point Five UFT Learn Point Five, where that uh, application comes right along with UFT, it's going to use Microsoft Access Database. So you're going to select this one. X Microsoft Access Driver Store.mdb. Okay, and then you can mention here database name. You see, this is the data source. You can give some name, some like say test uh, DSN say one two three or something. Then you're going to select here, and you can mention you can you can mention the location. So most of the time you will get the location of the database here. This the this way like you'll get the database is located. So you're going to provide the same thing here. Anyway like in my case the database is not there because I'm using UFT12. But here once you provide that location of the database, then you should be able to create a DSM. Okay. Okay. Um, maybe that's what like uh, 